The commercial plane was completely ready for landing. But just a few meters away from the runway, this accident happened. A bird hit the cockpit screen with force. It was fortunate that the screen did not break and the plane was safely landed. But not every plane is as fortunate as this one. US Airways Flight 1549 was completely ready for takeoff at New York Airport. It was January 15, 2009, and it was 3.25 in the afternoon. One minute later, the plane took off successfully, and the pilot, as per routine, sent the news of the takeoff to the control tower. This plane was an Airbus A320 with 150 passengers and five crew members on board. For the next two minutes, the plane continuously gained altitude, but at a height of 2818 feet, the pilot saw a very large flock of Canada geese in its path. There was very little time, and turning the plane was not possible in any way. Then, what the pilots never want to face happened. These birds did not just collide with the plane, but its powerful turbofan engine sucked them in. Normally, in such situations, the plane's engine fails, but with the help of the other engine, the plane can be landed at a nearby airport. But in the case of Flight 1549, the birds were sucked into both engines of the plane and, unfortunately, at only 2,800 feet of altitude, the plane had lost the power of both its engines. Considering their position and altitude, the pilots showed courage and landed the plane in the Hudson River. Boats present at the scene immediately came to the plane and rescued all the passengers and crew. This incident is also remembered as the miracle on the Hudson and it was the first and perhaps the last incident in aviation history where, even at such a low altitude with engines out, not a single casualty occurred. Despite so much technology, airports around the world have not yet found a significant solution to this problem. This was still a whole flock of birds. Even a single ordinary bird can cause considerable damage to the entire plane. Not only birds, but when planes are at airports, there have been several accidents reported during loading and unloading where a jet engine pulls in anything close to it. Before jet engines, planes were equipped with piston engines with propellers to generate thrust. One issue with these normal engines was that they did not produce as much thrust. Obviously, due to the lower thrust, the speed of the plane was also lower and they could not fly at higher altitudes. The world's first jet engine was created in 1930. Through this technology, a turbine pulls air, compresses it, and then burns it with fuel. After burning, the pressure inside the engine increases significantly, which pushes the aircraft forward rapidly. Compared to normal engines, jet engines are also lighter, more fuel efficient. Their thrust is higher, and their noise is also much lower compared to piston engines. For example, if we talk about the engine of an Airbus A380, a single engine sucks in 1,250 kilograms of air per second. This air enters from the front side of the engine. 1,250 kilograms means that if the engine is running, it can easily pull anything in front of it, which can be luggage, a tree, a crew member, or even a small cart. In this video, you can see an E-170 aircraft parked and its engine running. A cone accidentally gets sucked into the engine by a crew member in the tunnel, and immediately, a fireball is ejected from the other side. Now, we have talked about the pressure of air going into the jet engine. The pressure that comes out of the backside of the engine is called thrust. This pressure is much higher than the pressure entering the engine, about 100 times more. The thrust produced by a single engine of an Airbus A380 is 127,000 kilograms, and combined, both engines produce 254,000 kilograms. This is as much thrust as the weight of an average train engine. So, it would not be wrong to say that at the time of takeoff, if a train engine were placed behind the plane, it could easily be overturned. This is a Boeing 777 that at the time of takeoff, flipped an entire truck parked far behind it. Moreover, we have seen many videos where tourists on the beach near St. Martin Airport are blown away by the jet engine's thrust, resulting in the death of a woman so far. These videos give us a good idea of the power of jet engine thrust. To avoid these accidents, 
airport authorities have established several SOPs regarding how close one can approach the plane's engine and how much distance to maintain. The biggest risk occurs during baggage loading because at that time, the plane's engine is also on and luggage loading happens from its front side. At modern airports, we have seen luggage being loaded through automatic conveyor belts. Additionally, during boarding, often a tunnel is set up that attaches directly to the plane's door. The main purpose of this is to avoid these kinds of accidents. Airport authorities have strict SOPs that nothing should be placed in front of the plane's engine during boarding. And when all the staff have completed their work and moved aside, then the engine is turned on. This mark placed on the turbine of the plane's engine is also for this reason, so that during rotation, it can easily be seen that the turbine is spinning. These are the measures that can prevent damages due to human error. But what about birds? They are unknowing, voiceless. According to an estimate, every year, just because of birds, the aviation industry suffers a loss of $1.2 billion. Aviation engineers and airport authorities have been searching for a solution to this problem for the last several decades. But, so far, they have been unsuccessful. But it's not that efforts are not being made to keep birds away from planes. This is why we don't see trees within airport compounds, especially around the runways. Because it's the trees where birds perch or make their nests. Airports might be the only places where efforts are made on a mass level to chase away birds. Somewhere gunshots are fired to scare them, statues are placed somewhere, or at some places, the sounds of predatory animals are played on loudspeakers. Many airports even keep trained dogs and falcons so they don't let any birds into the compound. Along with this, airports do not leave anything that might attract birds, like open ponds where birds could drink water. Even now, artificial intelligence is being used to create robotic falcons. That will keep other birds away from airports. Now here, you might be thinking that instead of all this trouble, why not put a protective net on the plane's engine, which could not only prevent birds, but also any object from entering the engine. In reality, these engines suck in such a large quantity of air that if a mesh or net were placed in front, it would significantly disturb the airflow. Moreover, even though a bird might not be able to enter the engine, due to the suction of air, it would stick with the net, which would further disturb the airflow. Most birds collide with planes only during takeoff and landing because they cannot fly at higher altitudes. However, according to reports, some hawks have been seen up to 15,000 feet in altitude, and a type of duck flies at an astonishing height of 23,000 feet during migration. These are the birds that have not yet been kept away from planes.